In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, Divine Creator, true source of light and fountain of wisdom, pour forth your brilliance upon my dense intellect. Dissipate the darkness which covers me, that of sin and of ignorance. Grant me a penetrating mind to understand a retentive memory, method, and ease in learning, the lucidity to comprehend, and abundant grace in expressing myself. Guide the beginning of my work, direct its progress, and bring it to successful completion. This I ask through Jesus Christ, through God and through man, living and reigning with you and the Father, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ang Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas Sa 
A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Today marks the third installment of the Department of Biological Sciences lecture series. So first of all, I would like to welcome and acknowledge our speakers for today's lecture, Dr. Yuki Kobayashi of the Yamaguchi University in Japan and Dr. Ryan DeSoto of the National University of Singapore. In today's lecture series, our esteemed speakers will give us a glimpse of the importance and role of microorganisms which they portray in the environment. So Dr. Kobayashi will provide us with an overview as to the role and presence of this antibiotic resistant bacteria in the aquatic environment and the potential threats that these antibiotic resistant microorganisms present. On the other hand, Dr. DeSoto will discuss the involvement of microorganisms in nutrient removal in wastewater treatment plants. So these lectures are timely and relevant in today's setting since the Philippines is experiencing problems related to antibiotic resistance and wastewaters. These issues may not reach the mainstream media, however, we scientists know the underlying threats behind these issues and not just this COVID pandemic alone. Furthermore, Today's lecture will help you, our dear students, to learn about the wonders of microorganisms, its biology, ecology, chemistry, and application. So once again, I would like to thank our speakers for graciously accepting our invitation. I know that this lecture is going to be full of exciting information and knowledge, and I am hoping that our students will realize the role of biological research in understanding and addressing present environmental and health issues. Thank you very much. And once again, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Hi, Yuki-san. Konnichiwa. Hi. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Thank you again for accommodating our invitation. It is really a pleasure and an honor mm -hmm. to have you as one of our speakers for today's um, third DBS lecture series. So I'd like to give you the floor so you can tell what's your presentation all about to our audience. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about the antimicrobial resistance bacteria. So I, I would like to know the, how the antimicrobial resistance bacteria is the spreading in the environment. Yeah. Wow, very interesting. I think most of our audience here, if not all, definitely are looking forward for this topic. So yes. could you let us know first, especially the audience like our students, when do we classify or what do we mean about antimicrobial resistant bacteria? What? What's what do we mean by antimicrobial resistant the bacteria? Me meaning? Meaning? Yes, maybe you can okay. help the students okay. have the definition and establish okay their basic information of this um, terminologies. Okay, so the, uh, uh, can I start the, my presentation easy hi. before I answer? Okay. Thank so, you. So, okay, so hi Izzy, thank you very much for introduction. And I'm very happy to have a presentation today in DBS lecture today. And also Professor Papa, thank you very much for giving me the very nice uh, opportunity to have a talk today. I'm very happy to have a talk today. So I'm Yuki Kobayashi and working with Yamaguchi University in Japan. So now I'm in the medical field and teaching, tech, uh, teaching pathology, histology, and cytology. So before, uh, before asking your question, I will, I will introduce my university and uh, my friendship with a Philippine friend in USD. It's okay, easy? Sure, definitely. Thank you. Okay, okay. So the, this is the map, the Japan and the Philippines. And then uh, Yamaguchi is located in west of Japan here. So the, from Philippines to Japan, it takes around four hours. 
by airplane. So as a project of EREC, EREC project, I met the Professor Papa, JC, and EZ. Uh, it's very good uh, chance to know all of you. To, and I hope I can keep in touch for future plan. So as a part of the pro project research, I went to the Shiran Santo Rosa River in 2015. So we collect water sample along the river. And this is easy and easy again. And the Filipino friends work very hard with us and always they help us very well. So it's very hard work actually, but it's very good experience, good memory for, my, for me in my life. So in the Philippines, I found many my favorite Filipino things, the Jollibee and the Pansit, the Papaitan and the Tiger Bill. The, I bought a lot of souvenirs in the Philippines. So when I went back to Japan, my luggage is full of the souvenir. <laughs> and uh, I have a many Filipino foods and uh, dish. And, but so I miss Filipino food after I went back to Japan. So I cook the Filipino food, the Kirawin Pandesal Shiniga Adobo. It looks okay. <laughs> So in the near future, I want to go back to the Philippines and I try to eat all of my, fa my favorite foods. Sorry, it's my introduction. So uh, I will talk my research, research talk. And then the title is Antimicrobial Resistant Bacteria in Aquatic Environment. But this is a term I will often use in this presentation. So AMR is antimicrobial resistant. The ARB is antimicrobial antibiotic resistant bacteria. AMAR is multi-antibiotic resistance. So please remember them. So what is antimicrobials? Antimicrobials is antibiotics, antivirals, antifungal, and antiparasites. And also, Medicine, it's medicine used to prevent and treat infection in human, animal, and plant. So, so what is a AMR? AMR occur when bacteria, virus, fungi, and parasite change over time and no longer respond to medicine making infection harder to treat. So this means increasing the risk of disease spread, severe illness, and death. As a result, antibiotics become ineffective and infection become increasingly difficult or impossible to treat. Microorganisms can develop antimicrobial resistance easily, so sometimes referred to as a superbugs. So this is a history of armrest. This is a development of antimicrobial agent. And this is emergence of drug resistance bacteria, ARB. After discovering the penicillin in 1943, uh, ARB emerged quickly within two, two years. So it's like armrest and now we confront in confront serious situation because there is no effective antimicrobials anymore. The most serious ARB is ESBL, extended spectrum beta lactamase producing bacteria. These are resistant to many antibiotics, so there is no medicine to kill them. So United Nations gave up, gave um, about ARB, if no action is taken, ARB could cause 10 million deaths in 2015. So this number is higher number of than those of cancer. And it's also damaged to the economy as catastrophic as a global financial crisis. So how to spread AMR? This is not in a hospital problem. 
but also in the environment. Antibiotics is used to animal also, so ARB is moved to animal to me to human. And also the ARB is through the vector, for example, insect, the, they go to the environment around the world. So FAO, OIE, WHO set up the concept, the One Health. Have, we, have you heard before this word? Yes, Yuki-san. Um, I think uh, I'm familiar with it. And hopefully mm -hmm. some of our audience mm -hmm. are also familiar with One Health. Oh, really? It's good. Yes, yes. Maybe yeah. you can enlighten them about One Health. Mm, yeah, good. The One Health is idea that human health is connected to animal and environment. So we need to consider AMR problem is including the environment and uh, animal also for our future. That's right, because it's a holistic approach, Yuki-san. Yes. So, yes. Um, I'm pretty sure the audience right now would be very excited how you intend to join this holistic approach and your mm -hmm. study would be very helpful. So very, very yeah, uh, I'm giving you the floor now so that you can further explain your work. Okay, it's very good. Yes, but uh, some uh, paper shows uh, some uh, ARB is found in the environment. The, some paper said the ARB is uh, found in the aqua farm or, or some paper said the flood water after hurricane and some paper said ESB are found in wastewater treatment plant through the hospital. So it's very important to understand the dynamics of ARB for reducing the public health threat. However, much remains unknown about our ARB dynamics in natural environment. So especially in Asia, so many ARB are found. This is one of the case. Uh, this is a Philippine case. This is a Lake Laguna, it's a Panshi and Pagito River. Yeah. The, this is a, a first author is Professor Suzuki. He is my research supervisor. He is working with uh, Filipino scientists. They are in UP. So my objective is to detect ARB in the in aquatic environment. So this is a research map. Uh, sorry, this is a Japanese map. Then this is a river upstream to downstream. The here is already ocean, the sea. And then this is our hospital. So we collect the water sample from May to August, so three days each month at three point. A is located the 3.1 kilometer from the river mouth. B is near the uh, hospital. C is harbor. So we need to investigate the environment factor, physical, chemical, and biological factor. At sampling point, we measure the physical factor, DO, temperature, pH, and EC. Uh, for chemical and biological factor, we, we brought back to the water sample to the lab. So this is a, this is a, a to detect the ARB, we try to test the culture test and the disk test. Water sample were filtrated on 0.22 micrometer filter and put on the McConkey agar. This is a McConkey agar. And after incubation, we count the colony. The one plate is no antibiotics have. And the other plate is have the antibiotics, penicillin, cefotaxim, tetracycline. And then this test already I found, uh, already tried. The colony are isolated. We can find this colony. We isolated this colony on the 
splittings on the plate. The colony are isolated and the culture all colony on the agar and put the disc like this. All disc have the un different uh, antibiotics. So we use uh, this seven kind of the antibiotic disc. So I will, I will explain something. So disc, if you can find the inhibition link, this one, this means that this bacteria is susceptible and sensitive to this antibiotic to this antibiotics. The, if we cannot find no inhibition link, uh, this means that this bacteria is resistant to this antibiotics. So using all colony, we try to the DNA sequencing analysis to identify the bacteria species. Uh, culturing the bacteria colony in LB medium, uh, we collect the DNA, extract the DNA, and try to the PCR, and try to the DNA sequencing and uh, homolo homology research test. The lastly, we try to ESBL MBL screening and confirmation test. Please look at the right agar plate, this one. The, we use the antibiotic disc and the center, this one, this one. This center disc is uh, have a uh, clavulan acid, which is reducing the effect of antibiotics of neighbor disc. So if we can find the enlargement of inhibition ring, we can guess this is the ESBL producing bacteria. Okay, let's move to the result. So this is a detection rate of ARB, A sampling point A, B, C. The, uh, X shows a sampling day from May to August. The Y shows a uh, detection rate of uh, ARB. Blue is ampicillin, orange cefotaxin, gray is tetracycline. So you can see the all, at all sites, there is a, a ARB, and especially ampicillin number, uh, ampicillin resistance colony rate is very higher than, higher at all sites. So this is a susceptible, susceptible test using all colony. So, Line shows the antibiotics name. Column shows the colony number. So we use the 30 colony. So R is resistant, S is susceptible, I is intermediate. So uh, you can see Very all, yeah, all colony has a resistant. Wow. And especially about um, uh, penicillin, penicillin, all colony has a resistance to penicillin. And especially all bacteria are multi antimicrobial resistance. I mean, it's already three. This is a three, four, five. Yeah. So uh, all bacteria bacteria are multi antimicrobial resistance. It's very surprising result. Yes, it is, Yuki-san. I think this is something that we were talking about earlier before the um, presentation. Yeah. The audience yeah. and even myself, we are really excited to know that among all the bacteria you were able to sample and analyze, how many of them are multi antimicrobial resistant? So this is a very interesting finding um we are excited to hear more of your study so please continue yeah yeah, yeah. So we, we we just only three bact uh, 30 uh, bacteria isolated but actually we cannot detect the uh, colony we i i mean there's um, still many antibiotic bacteria in environment so in the future i will try yes, <laughs> more yeah. 
Okay. Thank you, Yuki san. Yeah. So, how many drugs are they resistant to? So, this percentage shows that each MRAR test. The surprisingly, all colony have multi antibiotic resistance. So, you, so I mean, 10% is two drugs, then 26% is three drugs. And all strain I got, so it's me, the 30, my 30 bacteria has all uh, MAR. So this is MAR bacteria at the genus level. According to sequencing analysis, we found the Pseudomonas seracea orcobacterium is a high number of the MAR at the genus level. So we tried to ESBL screening and the confirmation test. So we found some bacteria possibility of ESBL producing bacteria in natural environment. When we found the, this data, we are very surprised because ESBL is very, very, very super bugs in the hospital. So we can find ESBL in the natural environment. It's very, very uh, surprising data set. So these are Salmonella, Pseudomonas, Crevisiera. So now we are going to confirm PCR using ESBL primer to identify from the point of the DNA analysis. So this is a summary. So among 30 strain we got, all bacteria shows the multiple antimicrobial resistance. So genus of multi antimicrobial resistance bacteria are mainly Pseudomonas, Seracea, and Orcobacterium. The some bacteria have a possibility of ESBL producing bacteria. It's very surprised. But we still continue to this study to understand AMR. So I hope I will show the next data next time. Yes, yes, Yuki-san. I'm actually mm -hmm. excited to know that. Um, maybe before you end your presentation, I'd like to know um, mm -hmm. You've mentioned you'd like to further your study. Um, what specific future directions would you like to do or to conduct after knowing these results or having obtained these results? What could be your laboratory um, would like to do after this type of, or after receiving these results? So you mean the, the future plan? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, future plan. Yes, it's a good, very good question because uh, I didn't explain in detail about the use and the uh, culture method. I use the uh, Makonki Aga. Yes. Yes. Makonki Aga only we can detect the in, uh, intestinal bacteria. It's related to the pathogen for human in yeah. the gut. So we cannot detect the environment bacteria. Because I only use a Makonki aga in environment, there are so many bacteria they cannot live in in Makonki aga. So in the future, I will change the uh, another aga to yes. detect more real bacteria, and also I will try to the DNA analysis. They cannot live the aga plate. Only we can detect the DNA. So I will try to way to detect the more to detect a more AMR in the environment. That's that's a good um, direction, Yuki san. I think that's also my observation. And mm -hmm. I think once you were able to use other media to yeah. um culture different yeah. um potential um bacteria mm -hmm. or antimicrobial yeah. resistant bacteria. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to further your um, findings. And just to mention, it's actually wise to use Makonki Agar already at the beginning of your research because you have targeted already um, potential bacteria and um, at least you're able to test your hypothesis. And this is a good um, venue, I guess, because we have now a lot of third year students trying to draft their thesis proposal. So mm. I'm pretty sure, especially the microbiology majors, um they can relate better on this topic so 
um, this is a good inspiration. Uh, hopefully, for most of them, when they when they start drafting their proposal of, or at least when they consider their thesis topics, that's also true for the yeah. other students that we have. I think you can okay. continue your presentation, Nikki So, 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 Rastri, I can say something, okay? Sure, sure, please. Okay, okay. So, Rastri, I want to underline. So, AMR is one of the top global public health threat facing the humanity. It's related to the SDGs also. And now we are we are facing all COVID-19 problem, the pandemic around the world. It's very, very serious situation and it's very important to resolve the, this pandemic uh, issue. But on the other hand, we have to address the AMR issue also because it's very important to uh, understand, to investigate AMR for our future. So for resolving the AMR issue, we need to exchange the scientific information and also cooperate each other. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope you are interested in my talk. So next time I want to work with Team Philippine for our health on environment and as a concept of the One Health. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chiki San. Very good of you. So Thank we you. really appreciate definitely your topic, and this is very interesting and timely, yeah. to be honest. Um, despite the situation, yes, the, despite mm -hmm. the situation that we have right now, um, this is a, a a problem or an issue that should be taken also into um into consideration. Definitely, we want to make sure that we learn from the situation right now. So it is better to prepare ourselves with this um, possible scenarios health crisis so as early as now or um, i hope it's not too late we get to really detect uh, or at least get information about um, mar especially mm -hmm. in the environment in the aquatic environment and i'm happy to hear that you're open for collaborations definitely yeah. with our students yeah. or with our researchers yeah. for this type yeah. of topic because like uh, what you have experienced we've been to the river streams here in the philippines even to lakes or different aquatic mm -hmm. ecosystems in the philippines mm -hmm. and you know the situation i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure um this uh type of study would really uh provide uh information a good information not just within the scientific community but also with the health um of um and the entire health community like what you're highlighting, um, the call of WHO for One Health. So this yeah. is a holistic approach, which I am looking forward to. And thank you for offering this um, possible collaboration with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Thank very you much. so much, Yuki-san. Thank so, you very much, Maya. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. uh, I will reserve some of our questions uh, for the open forum. But again, yeah. allow me to thank you for this um, good opportunity to hear this very timely research. Yeah, thank, thank you again, you Yeah, thank you very much. Very easy. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. I'll see you later in the open forum. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Nino and Lola, for that wonderful introduction. So this afternoon, I actually have the honor of moderating our next session with the proud alumnus of the BS Microbiology Program, who is none other than Dr. Ryan De Soto. So let's give the formalities to Ryan. No? Again, thank yeah, you sir. so much for having for having accepted our invitation being here with us today. So a fun fact, guys, me and Kuya Ryan were mentored by the same professor during our undergraduate year. So this is none other than Dr. Gina Dedeles. So Kuya Ryan finished his bachelor's degree in 2010 while I finished mine in 2013. So really, uh, we didn't uh, get to know each other back during our undergraduate years. But then from, from then on, also, our research fields have diverged greatly. So since ako, I went straight into medicine. So now I venture into the biomedical field. Kuya Ryan now remained true to his roots from his undergraduate research and focused on environmental research. And for the most part, um, Kuya Ryan has been staying, uh, has been outside the Philippines for around 10 years now, no? 
Yes, correct. Having, having obtained or, or having um, stayed in Korea for his master's and then uh, for PhD and postdoc in Singapore. So, uh, for our first question, Kuya Ryan, I just want to ask you this. How different is the academic life abroad as compared here in the Philippines? Okay, I think um, for Koreans, Koreans and Singaporeans are both um, in, uh, students. Huh? In terms of studying, they're really hardworking. You would see um, Koreans doing overnight uh, and staying over in their uh, in libraries. That's the first time I've seen um, uh, students sleeping over and are really studying for their exams. However, for um, coursework, I think the Philippines and our curriculum um, back home um, is better in terms of hands-on activities. And uh, we have a lot of laboratory experiments, which I uh, I believe uh, helped me in my in my research. As compared to Singapore, I went, um, here the students don't really have a lot of um, lab work. And if they do, they will just simply follow the instructions of their mentors. And um, it's already printed out and already um, ready for, for everyone to, to do. Uh, uh, in the Philippines, I remember uh, we have to make our own media, stuff like that. And um, uh, it's, it's a part of the learning experience and um, I enjoyed it a lot. And I, I believe when Filipinos or if a Filipino would go outside else or elsewhere, outside the Philippines to pursue his graduate studies, he or she would be able to um, um, to um, uh, adapt easily and um, he, he or she would find it um, easy to, to, um, to adjust and um, especially with the coursework and, and the lab work as well. Yeah, that's a nice piece of encouragement. I, I mean, co coming from someone who eventually would like to pursue graduate studies abroad then. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay, so so much for our chica. I really want to know more about your research, Kuya Ryan. Because uh, these mm -hmm. are mental muscles I haven't stretched in a while. Okay, given okay. my biomedical background right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, really what I wanted you to ask first is what was the motivation or inspiration behind your doctoral research? Okay, so my doctoral study was um, well. The main motivation really is when I did um, I did uh, a pilot scale study of a system, and that was my first time to do um, such a system. And it was introduced by our South Korean uh, friends, and we piloted it here in Singapore, which is um, has received a lot of um, accolades and actually. Uh, received well by the Singaporean government. Mm -hmm. um, however, there's not a lot of studies that were discussing or that delved on uh, the biological aspect of the study. Hence, I, I, I thought of downscaling it into a lab scale, and I will be the first one to study the system in terms of its um, uh, like microbiome and the effects of microbiome with the nutrient removal performance. So yeah, that's the... Uh, let's. Should I start with my presentation first? Sure, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so the title of this study... Okay, let me share my screen. Um, it's uh, Biological Nutrient Removal in Wastewater Treatment Plants and the Role of Microbiome and Chemical Perturbations on Nutrient Removal Performance. Yeah. So a brief background of uh, my study, uh, 3.9 billion people will be in areas of severe water stress by 2030 if um, water policies are not enacted by then. And this is made worse by urbanization and overpopulation. And with its impending depletion, we need sustainable sources of water. Wastewater reuse is one of the more sustainable solutions uh, with a high production value actually. And in fact, reclamation of water uh, of, or wastewater for industrial, residential, irrigation, and other applications is one of the most widely used solutions, especially for countries with water scarcity uh, problems. And the largest producers of wastewater are from residential and industrial origin. So to treat wastewater, um, environmental engineers use the activated sludge process, which is the most common method used for domestic wastewater treatment. And depending on the target effluent quality and influent characteristics, 
there are various configurations that are to be used for um, uh, wastewater treatment. So in my case, I used the, um, the technology MBR, which is um, membrane bioreactors. So the introduction of membrane for wastewater um, application has actually revolutionized wastewater treatment. MBRs produce high effluent quality and um, it has better control of solids and it has low environmental uh, footprint. However, for MBRs, the main problem is membrane biofouling, which is an inevitable phenomenon that are observed in um, membrane use. So this is due to uh, various organic and inorganic matters from wastewater and polymers, as well as soluble microbial products um, uh, from organisms that have accumulated on the membrane surface. So this phenomenon has led to the development of anti-fouling configurations employing mechanical, chemical, and even uh, biological strategies. In this study, actually, I've used two systems, which is first, air scouring technology, which uses continuous aeration of the membrane module. And secondly, the reciprocation MBR system, which uses inertial forces that are generated by mechanically moving the membranes from left to right laterally. And this anti-fouling mechanism, um, coupled with bio biological nutrient removal systems, offers promising cost-effective and efficient treatment of wastewater. So most of the nutrients in uh, the wastewater treatment plant is removed in the secondary treatment where uh, the wastewater is mixed with the activated sludge. So in my process, I use the MLE process, which is the modified Lutzak Ettinger. Um, here is a diagram of, uh, of my um, treatment. First, the influent comes in, goes to the anoxic tank, and then aerobic tank, and then eventually the MBR tank for uh, filtration, and that's where the filtrate water would be. So several microbial groups are responsible for the removal of organic carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus in the activated sludge. And the removal of these nutrients is important to, to prevent eutrophication or accelerated algal growth in receiving water systems. So when you discharge wastewater containing high concentrations of nitrogen and phosphorus, it might promote um, accelerated algal growth. And this is what we don't want because yeah. if we see um, algae, uh, algal growth in, um, in uh, rivers, it may um, deplete oxygen, therefore it might affect the ecology of uh, uh, the water systems that uh, are receiving the wastewater. Mm -hmm. And it might also produce cyanotoxin, cyanotoxins, which can um, affect us indirectly if we uh, consume water from uh, freshwater sources. And um, organisms such as AOB, or ammonia oxidizing bacteria, nitrate oxidizing bacteria, denitrifiers, anamox, and comamox um, are the ones responsible for the removal of, uh, of ammonia or nitrogen and it converts it to nitrogen gas, while phosphorus is accumulated in the cells of polyphosphate accumulating organisms. So since BNR is a biologically mediated process. We need optimum conditions for microbial growth and metabolism, conditions such as dissolved oxygen, pH, and um, HRT and SRT must be maintained well for a system to be, um, to be successful. As we all know, um, wastewater coming into wastewater treatment plants would have the presence of bioactive compounds. So of these compounds, Antibiotics have direct effect on growth and metabolism of microbes. However, most studies of um, antibiotics in wastewater treatment plants focus on their occurrence and fate in the treatment process and not really its effects on nutrient removal. So that's the main um, uh, motivation of the study. So something that, some things that I have not done before, and since I'm doing um, an engineered system, I wanted to see what the effects of antibiotics with um, the nutrient removal performance of the two systems that I'm comparing. Yeah. Right. So a couple of keywords that I've gotten from the background, no? So we have mm -mm. biological nutrient removal. And am I right to assume that in your study, you will be comparing two systems? So that of the air scouring and the reciprocation MBR. 
Correct. all of these in the context of wastewater treatment. So, yes. so Kuya Ryan, uh, I would mm-hmm. also want to ask you, what was the research question or what was the dissertation all about? What was your research question and your hypothesis? And how did mm-hmm. you go about in testing these? Okay. So the main objectives of the study basically is to understand uh, uh, the nutrient removal performance because I didn't know um, what the RMBR or the reciprocation MBR would do in terms of uh, uh, the nutrient removal performance because it's a new system. So I wanted to prove um, that the nutrient removal performance in RMBR is on par or even better than the current system that we have, which is the air's current system. And then secondly is to elucidate the effects of um, uh, antibi- antibiotics mm-hmm. on uh, the performance of the two systems and the microbial community, which is right. r- really impor- in- important to, uh, for the removal of nitrogen and phosphorus in wastewater treatment plants. So how, and these are some of the hypotheses that I have initially. First is that the nutrient removal performance and microbial composition of the two MLE MBRs will be influenced by the anti-fouling mechanism used in each system. And then secondly, increasing concentration of individual and mixture of antibiotics would lead to changes in N and P removal, as well as microbiome of the air scouring and, R- um, and reciprocation MLE MBRs. So for the first phase of the study, what I did is to operate an MBR for 12 months, and we used a seed sludge coming from a real wastewater um, treatment system here in Singapore. And here are some of the parameters and operation operating conditions that I've uh, followed for my study. So the main difference, again, RMBR is um, a system with low DO concentration. ASMBR, air scouring MBR, has DO concentrations that are, that are higher than, um, generally higher than the RMBR. So this is what would affect nutrient removal performance and microbial community as per my hypothesis. So testing was done for water quality parameters and um, I've extracted DNA and RNA from my slush samples to perform quantification of nutrient removing genes. And then I sent some samples for sequencing for my microbial community analysis. So here for the results, we have um, seen a high COD removal actually for the two systems. This is so because what I use for the study for my main carbon source is um, basically just glucose. Glucose is easily degradable by microorganisms and are readily available for them to use as, 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 as their main carbon source. And um, so essentially for this graph, what I'm saying is that um, ammonia oxidation is better in air scouring system as compared to RMBR simply because of its high DO concentration. And it's well known that in systems with higher DO concentration, it promotes better ammonia oxidation or ammonia removal in in the system. Um, However, this is a downside for the removal of total nitrogen because in the presence of oxygen, uh, nitrate is not reduced to nitrogen gas easily. So organisms would prefer um, O2 as the main electron acceptor as compared to nitrate. So the nitrate is accumulated in the system in the presence of high um, DO concentration. Hence, uh, we have seen a higher um, TN removal efficiency in in the system with low DO concentration, which is the RMBR, and a a lower TN removal efficiency with the ASMBR having a higher DO concentration. Yeah. So next, um, I'd like to emphasize this organisms because, um, for example, we have a thousand people and um, you want to evaluate how these people would work. So we just you would just focus on which ones are really working on a specific um, uh, responsibility. So in the, it's similar with um, microbial community analysis. You have a lot of organisms and you would want to focus on those that you know are really a part of the nutrient removal process. So in this case, I have chosen these organisms. And we have seen that um, for phosphate accumulation, um, it is congruent with our results. We have seen that um, RMBR has better um, P removal as compared to um, ASMBR. This is supported by the higher relative abundance of these organisms. And um, meanwhile, for the relative abundances of denitrifying organisms such as Caldelinea and Asaspira, we have observed 
um, that one is prevalent in one system and not in the other. This actually just proves and emphasizes the fact that the process of denitrification cannot be solely associated with a certain group of um, organisms alone, since this process is shared across several um, organisms. So for the conclusions of this study of two systems, the reciprocation MBR showed better TN and TN and TP removal efficiencies. And the relative abundances of nutrient removing organisms can be used as predictors for N and P fluctuations during wastewater treatment um, process. And there should be uh, future works on biofilm communities in BNR systems. And um, since, uh, the microbial profile of uncultured organisms are yet to be understood in this um, um, uh, system. Yeah. All right. So that's so, for the first phase of the study. Yeah. So from this part, what I understood is that oh, well, inherently, both of these um, configurations would differ in terms of removal efficiencies for the, that is for uh, the nutrients, right? The nitrogen and the phosphorus. And Correct. Um, in terms of relative abundances of the representative organisms that are present in your bioreactors, they would also differ as well. And mm -hmm. uh, another thing or key thing that I got from this presentation is that, um, yes, in a community, you have these several members, but in those members, yun nga, you have to select for those key players. So those members mm, in the microbial community that would play a role in the treatment process. So mm -hmm. yun. Now, you also mentioned in your background that, um, syempre, we are treating wastewater. Eh. We do not know yes. what, where that wastewater would come from. For example, mm -hmm. come from hospital, come from an agricultural or a veterinary um, uh, source. So there would be instances mm -hmm. where in that wastewater would contain antibiotics, right? So yes, correct. based on the findings of your research, in what way can antibiotics influence the microbial community structure as well as the performance of the MDRs? All right. Okay. So let's move on with the uh, to the next phase of my study, which right. is basically on um, antibiotics and its effects on nutrient removal performance and microbiome of the two systems. So that's my phase two. Um, so for the phase two, I've chosen antibiotics that are found in wastewater treatment plants and are easily soluble, uh, are, I mean, are water soluble because otherwise I'll be using other solvent which might affect my results. Mm -hmm. So uh, these three antibiotics have different mechanisms of action and um, they are either bactericidal or bacteriostatic or both, depending on the concentration. So uh, essentially what I did is to get sludge from my... Um, continuous flow reactors, and then in inoculated them in um, a flask containing synthetic wastewater and increasing concentrations of antibiotics. I incubated them for five days and then get the result of the, what, uh, of the nitrogen and phosphorus removal as well as uh, flush samples for microbial community analysis to see how the community changed after five days um, of incubation. So for the results, um, we have seen that ASMBR communities, uh, sorry, ASMBR has higher ammonia removal efficiency as compared to RMBR. This is consistent with what I've um, shared previously. And um, of the antibiotics, only ampicillin had a significant effect on ammonia removal, uh, had no significant effect on ammonia removal as um, compared to tetracycline so metoxazole and a mixture of antibiotics where we have seen uh, an increase or decrease in efficiency in removing ammonia. And uh, for this, there of um, the control, both of uh, the sludge in the MLE MBR. Why so? Uh, nitric concentrations, um, it's accumulated in the system when denitrification did not successfully proceed. So in this case, in the presence of tetracycline and mixture of antibiotics, denitrification was significantly affected, hence the accumulation of um, nitrate. This was supported by other studies, especially that of uh, Chen et al. in 2015, where they have seen that at 2, two milligrams per liter of tetracycline, uh, there was a decrease in the denitrification efficiency in the reactor that they've used. 
And then for the microbial community analysis here, um, it's just a representation of the relative abundance of abundant organisms and in the form of a scatter plot. So these scatter plots are basically uh, the Pearson correlation coefficients of the relative abundance of select organisms in both of the systems, RMBR and ESMBR, versus uh, the increasing concentration of the antibiotics used. So significant correlations are denoted by the asterisks inside the point. So the Pearson correlation coefficients show the effect of 0, 0 0.1 and 1 milligram per liter of antibiotics on the communities. And the plots demonstrate how the relative abundances of the most prevalent taxa are affected by the increasing concentration of the antibiotics, whereby a positive correlation indicates an increase in abundance at the increasing concentration of uh, the antimicrobial compounds, whereas a negative correlation shows a decreasing um, relative abundance as the antibiotics are increased. So as you can see, obviously, from the two um, communities, um, RMBR communities are generally less sensitive to the presence of antibiotics with slight sensitivity in the presence of mixture. However, for, for the air scouring MBR communities, we have seen a significantly decreasing um, relative abundance of these organisms when the antibiotics are increased. So significant effects of the antibiotics are apparent in the AS, um, ASMBR communities, primarily because of its um, of their growth rate. So um, in the presence of high concentration of oxygen in ASMBR, it promotes higher growth rate of organisms, and therefore they are more susceptible to the presence of chemical perturbations. Yeah. So for the conclusions of this uh, phase, we have seen that the increasing concentration of concentration of antibiotics affected nitrate deduction more than ammonia oxidation. And um, communities in the air scouring MBR sludge are more sensitive to the presence of antibiotics at increasing concentrations as compared to the um, RMBR. So this gave me an idea on what to do for my continuous flow studies where, um, where I need to focus more on um, the prolonged exposure of the communities and the system to tetracycline and mixture of antibiotics. Yes, that would be all for the second phase, pa Paolo. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. And from that, from that part alone, uh, I mean, what mm -hmm. I what I was able to get there, as in comparing the two configurations, you would, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the air scouring systems will be affected more than the yes. so, so in terms yeah, of and, uh, in terms mm -hmm. of recommendations, would you recommend to do the reciprocation MBR? More than that. Yes, correct. So aside from the reciprocation MBR being more energy efficient, mm -hmm. um, we have seen from the studies, from this study and the phases that I've done for my work, we have seen it has a better nitrogen removal um, efficiency. It has better P removal efficiency, which is the main focus of biological nutrient removal. And um, it performs well in terms of anti-fouling uh, mechanism, which is also important in MBR treatment. And the communities are less affected and are less sensitive in the presence of chemical perturbations, which is inevitable in wastewater treatment plants. So imagine your water coming from hospitals, especially now in, the, in, in times of COVID, yeah. right? Um, uh, the loading of wastewater containing high concentrations of antibiotics and other bioactive compounds. Uh, imagine if you're using an air scouring system, it would have more um, effect on, on the nutrient removal performance, hence the fluctuations of your um, removal efficiency in the effluent. So I would rather use RMBR. Uh, for my um, uh, for my configuration for the process of treating wastewater. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, so so much for the uh, findings on the uh, second part of your study. And I know mm -hmm. you have a lot of data to show us. So, but given the time constraints, yeah, um, I would just like to lead you to this next question. So, what mm -mm. are aspects or some of the aspects of your research that remain unanswered? So if I'm oh. someone who wants to continue the study, what would what would it be? Actually, there's a couple of things that I have not um, done. And fortunately, because I didn't have, I wanted to finish it in 3.5 years. Mm -hmm. So I told my professor I would not, I would skip this um, other things and would, yeah. would just submit my thesis. 
um, since it's already published anyway. And um, yeah, I wanted to move on. So um, what what they can do if they would want to uh, to pursue this uh, kind of study in the future is that they should quantify the antibiotics in the effluent samples. It's important for us to know the concentration of antibiotics that are um, degraded and that would remain in the system because this would affect the nutrient removal performance and also uh, the composition of the organisms in your system. And then I wanted to add an injured organism which would promote better ammonia removal because yeah. I wanted to see how um, this would affect the interaction of the init communities and the bioengineered organism. However, however, I was not able to, to do this anymore. And then they should perform metaomics analysis. In this study, I was only able to do metagenomics. Um, um, I did not present my, my, my result for, my, for the gene analysis, but then um, it's it needs to be supported by proteomics and transcriptomics um, analysis, but then our lab did not have an expertise on these um, fields, so I only um, learned and applied um, uh, metagenomics, 6 and S uh, microbial community analysis. And lastly, as I was um, saying previously, um, there's this organism that's called, that's called Comomox, or the complete ammonia oxidizing organism, and it is actually uh, only introduced or discovered in 2015. Mm -hmm. And it already has affected a lot of um, uh, initial theories and uh, uh, the well-known nitrogen cycle. It has changed it drastically. And so I wanted to um, isolate novel Komomok species because we don't have enough uh, genome uh, for this organism, and it's it's better if we would have if we would analyze its genome more, so that we would better understand its physiology and how it affects nutrient removal and um, how it does uh, this in in engineered systems as well. All right, thank you so much, Claire Ryan. That was a really wonderful presentation. So I really learned yeah. a lot from the data presented, and indeed. This will have much implications in terms of wastewater treatment. So, sana in the Philippines, we apply din natin yan. I actually still mm -hmm. have lots of questions for you. But to, due to time constraints, I would just like to end our session for the audience. So, one last hurrah, if mm -hmm. I may. So, what advice can you give to our aspiring scientists? Because given that uh, most of our audience here would be young and aspiring scientists. So, mm -hmm. what advice can you give them to be... Um, I should say, as successful as you. Okay, I have four things in mind, actually, for um, the aspiring scientists back home. Um, okay, four L's. Okay. First okay, is prepared to live. Okay. Yeah. First <laughs> is to live, to laugh, to love, and to let go. Uh, why... Because first, um, I, I think we have to live your lives. You have to live your life to the fullest. And we only get to live once. And it's important for us to make the most out of it. And just don't be afraid to take risks and to challenge yourselves to be a better version of you. Because that's what I've done uh, after my undergrad. Uh, uh, after working for a few years, I was already complacent because I was earning quite... Um, well in Singapore and I thought this is not this is not what I'm called to do I wasn't happy anymore I wanted to do something different so I applied for for um for uh graduate studies and that's something I would never regret because I've learned a lot of things from it second is to laugh you should um not forget to give yourself time to relax and to socialize with your friends and to give yourself a treat and celebrate even the smallest achievements that you have so what I would do if um, after publishing a paper, I would eat something that I am craving um, to eat, like, you know, um, pancake, I would cook Filipino food and um, indulge myself with, with stuff that I, that I think I deserve because um, it's important for my mental um, well-being. And also you can apply this um, with, your, uh, with, uh, with yourself as well. And third is to love. Make sure to find time to talk to your friends and loved ones back home, especially when you're um, overseas doing your master's and PhD. And make sure that 
despite your um, busy schedule and your um, absence, um, make sure that your presence is felt by you know making a simple phone phone call. I would still make sure that I call my friends, uh, my high school friends, and would um, uh, catch up with my um, undergrad peers by messaging them on um, Instagram and Facebook, and just make them feel that you're still there despite you being away. Um, because these people are your strongholds and you need them to get you through the hardest of times whenever you're doing um, and when, whenever you're doing um, graduate studies abroad and when you're, whenever you're feeling down, which is going to be a lot of times, by the way. And last is to let go of all the negativities. You don't need these negativities in your pursuit of knowledge for they would only weigh you down. So um, negative people and um um, whoever tries to weigh you down are not important um, anymore. So let go of these people and focus on your um, aspirations and just focus on your studies. And yeah, I think those four would be important for you to be a successful scientist. Okay, these are really nice words of encouragement, Koya Ryan. So a couple of things I learned from that. So first is to learn to celebrate the small victories, every small victory. Yeah. Diba? And in the end, a degree is just a degree. But what mm -hmm. more or what, what is important or what matters more would be the experiences that you get out of it. Both the, both the good and the bad. Diba? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, thank well, you. Actually, okay. actually especially, especially the bad ones. Yeah. Not only, no, not only the good ones. Because the I bad agree. ones would, would, would teach you life's lessons that you, would, you, can, you can share to your peers. And this is where um, I actually get my most of my inspiration from my failures and not being able to achieve what I wanted initially. Um, those didn't hinder me to um, pursue what I wanted. And eventually, uh, those were my inspiration. I took inspiration from my failures and used them um, uh, for the benefit of, of myself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you. I'm so happy that we share the same mentality when it comes to that. No, so both good and the bad, especially the bad. So thank you so much, Koya Ryan. And I'm sure a lot of the people here in our audience would like to ask so much from you. So if I could just turn over the floor now to our hosts. So I'm sure you have lots of questions there. So please um, stay tuned for our open forum. So can we now have our hosts to begin? Uh, the ball, to set the ball rolling for our open forum.